Today's project is gonna be when I take a bunch of my scrap, I cut it up into different rips and make blanks for cutting boards, charcuterie boards. <laughs> Little side note here. My greatest fan, my two-year-old grandson, loves when I spell on my videos. Therefore, it's gonna be about a charcuterie. C H A R C. Well, let's, uh, you know what? Your mom and dad love Cabernet. C A B E R N E T. Let's get started. So I got to ripping various widths using my old uh, trusty push stick. It saved a finger or two. This is actually pretty good material. I don't even know why it was in the scrap pile. Nevertheless, we ripped it to various widths and then went to go ahead and put it certain lengths and did random layout so I wouldn't have the same pieces from the same board right next to each other. Got to make sure you have the right size for the project. Since I do quite a few glue ups, I built this clamp. It helps everything stay level and flat. And first I do this cross piece that holds it down. And then I just kind of put some slight pressure on it. Just squeeze out a little bit of glue so I can do some more adjusting. Add some calls like this and maybe just a single clamp on one end. And then I come back and tighten it down nice and tight. Let it cook overnight. And then you glue up the second one, which is a little bit smaller for a different kind of charcuterie. I hate making stuff that won't go through my planer. So I had to feed it through my white belt sander a couple hundred times. until we got it right down the smoothest that we needed. Since I already had the sander set up, I figured I'd just use that instead of rolling out the planer. Two blank, perfectly smooth walnut boards. I've got an idea for this one. It's something I designed on the CNC. And I also have something designed for this. A fleur-de-lis charcuterie board. First thing you have to do on your fleur-de-lis charcuterie is engrave it. Make it personalized. Then we go ahead and use a three-quarter inch bowl bit and pocket out all the areas of the charcuterie. Finally, we cut it out with a quarter inch end mill. Back to the layer. I did the overlap too big and I created a bunch of ridges that I needed to use a sharp chisel. The cutest little plane you've ever seen just to take all the ridges out to get it close to smooth. So I fill all this engraving in so you don't get any grime or bacteria down in any of the pockets or voids. It helps the letter stand out. Come back some 80 grit sandpaper and sand it nice and smooth. And then follow it up with some 220 fine grit just to make it nice and clean and kind of semi-polished. I wipe it down with acetone and make sure there's no resin left and see how it looks. Looks good. Then the tedious process of sanding with an orbital that doesn't fit in the pocket. And since we're going to do a lot of sanding, we're going to go ahead and start the other project because we don't have to watch it or anything so we can be twice as productive. I got to use all my sanders. Dremel, little profile sander, and I sanded by hand quite a bit as well. So while we were sanding, this finished up and we took that off and started the same tedious process. But not until we got to do some more sanding. And a catastrophe. And I couldn't find the splinter anywhere to glue back in. So I had to adapt and overcome. A little CA glue, some activator. 
pointer just big enough to fix our divot. CA glue takes all of 15 seconds or so to dry. And we sanded it smooth, went and barred a coping saw. And carefully went ahead and cut the piece flush with the edge with the help of another pair of hands from another old guy. I guess I'll have to take my word for it that it fixed it just right. And then I wiped it down with water just to raise the grain a little bit so I could come back and sand it by hand later and then put the mark of approval on it. I had just got this plane as a gift. Came in real handy and it sure is cute. So when the water dries, you have a little bit of raised grain and then you go back and you sand it with 220 and it makes it nice and smooth just like glass. I make my own concoction of mineral oil, some beeswax, a little carnauba. The wax assists in sealing the board, preventing it from drying out. Still going to have to treat it like a cutting board and oil it often. Now fortunately, this profile sander fit right in between a lot easier to sand than the other one. Did take near as long. And I did the same water trick with it and then eventually came back and got to sand that by hand as well. And then after quite a few hours, went ahead and wiped all the excess off. Came back to the other charcuterie and went through the same process. So after a few hours, we just wipe off all the excess, all the dry wax and we're done. This is what we can make out of scrap. Now our fluterly charcuterie is ready for shipment. Hey, appreciate you being here. If you get a chance, hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. Subscribe and watch the, those videos. See you real soon.